let's go on to Qantas. It was obviously a fiery question time today over the issue. Daniel, there is now a Senate inquiry into uh, the government's Qatar Airways decision. There's a lot of pressure on the Prime Minister over this. At this point, shouldn't the government just clearly state all interactions that they've had with Qantas over this decision? And also, no one has actually been able to clearly answer why this decision was made on Qatar Airways. I mean, do you know? Has it been explained to you as a Labor MP who has to front up to media interviews? Well, this decision was made in the national interest in the same way that decisions on these kinds of issues have been made in the national interest for many, many years. And I think the point that was made today in question time amid all of the uh, noise uh, was that uh, these decisions have been made on a very similar basis where both, no matter which party has been in office going back any number of years. We have to go back to the fundamental nature of the issue that is at stake, which is that uh, this is an agreement or a, de a decision to be made between two nations. And th th these agreements are only made where it's in the mutual national interest of both nations. Sometimes these agreements are made, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they have to be renegotiated. And what we have as a situation in Australia is that there are uh, a number of airlines who have increased their capacity into Australia recently. With Qatar, we have an airline which has a number of rights at the moment in uh, airports such as Queensland, in, in Brisbane and uh, Adelaide and Perth, where it's not taking up all the flights it possibly could. Uh, so we have a situation where it was judged not to be in the national interest, uh, to give them the full ask that they were after. Um, and that's very normal in this situation. And uh, when uh, Minister King made the point that similar kinds of decisions had been made under the previous government, there was a pretty strong reaction in the chamber, as you would have noticed. Yeah. Well, Keith, is this... Is there hypocrisy here? Doesn't the Nationals also have to answer questions over what decisions Michael McCormack made uh, relating to Qatar when he was the relevant minister and whether he took these decisions to Cabinet at the time? This was in 2018. Oh, Shari, this is just gold. I mean, you've had a Labor minister say on the record at a media interview that the national interest isn't defined so you don't know what it is. You had another one say the decision was to protect the national carrier Qantas. Uh, you've had Qatari representatives phone through to the foreign minister. I I'll guarantee you're not ringing to guarantee that Deputy Prime Minister Miles can get his golf clubs onto Qatar Airlines if he ever chooses to take a commercial flight. But the decisions we made in government were public. They were explained at the time. And you've got a government right now that wants to keep it a secret. Uh, and yet we've seen this commentary from representatives of the Labor government uh, over recent weeks uh, that really wants to keep this hidden. The Prime Minister's now been tied up into it. The Deputy <coughs> Prime Minister is tied up into it. Catherine King wouldn't answer. Um, Keith, but can I just interrupt you then? I'm sorry for interrupting. But you just said that you explained those decisions clearly when you were in government at the time. Well, what was the explanation? Why did... Michael McCormack make that decision to refuse Qatar Airways to have extra flights in 2018? Well, that was run through in the House today. Uh, and they but actually the read answer? out some of Mr McCormack's But what's the answer? Statements. What was, but what oh, well, is the answer? Well, he explained why those slots were... Well, he explained why those slots were available and what was provided. But right now, we've seen massive increases in Qantas take. The, the, the expenses for every single Australian to travel on Qantas is much higher than it was. We've seen them keep $500 million, they finally announced, in terms of credits from the Australian people. And we've had allegations of ghost flights that took bookings, uh, and the ACCC is allegedly looking at these now, to determine whether people were booked onto planes that were they never existed and were never going to take off. Uh, there are serious questions for the government to answer. Look, it, look, it is a massive scandal. Um, Daniel Milino, I had uh, your colleague Tony Sheldon on my program last night and he very strongly said that Alan Joyce should not be receiving a $24 million golden handshake. He said that any directors who want to give him that amount of money should have their directorship stripped. He said their heads should roll. Do you agree with him? Oh, look, I can totally understand uh, why Tony is saying those things. Look, I, I personally feel that the uh, decision as to whether or not he gets this benefit or that benefit is really up to the board and shareholders. I'm, at the, at the moment, as chair of the Economics Committee, uh, examining as part of a broader competition inquiry, Qantas, uh, but also Virgin and other airlines. I, I'm very focused on whether there are steps that we can take uh, to improve the competitiveness 
of the domestic aviation market. And I might say that the government is also trying to address some of these more systemic issues uh, in the green paper that it's working on, which will look at issues of competition, but also the stability of the issue and customer rights and, and other issues. So I think these kinds of systemic issues need real attention uh, and the work of uh, my committee right now, but also the work of the minister in the department. But, uh, but the just to be paper, clear, you we'll don't agree. But just to be clear, you don't agree with Tony Sheldon that uh, Alan Joyce should not receive his $24 million? Well, I'm not disagreeing with him, but look, I just don't have uh, a view on that. And uh, I, I think that uh, if I was a shareholder or a director, I'd be looking very carefully at the situation uh, mm. and for the reasons that Tony has uh, elucidated. Yeah. And what do you think about this, Keith Pitt? Oh, well, I saw media reports recently that says there's a clawback provision the board can utilise. You mm. don't need a clawback provision. Uh, this, should give, this should be just a straight a give-back provision. Uh, Mr Joyce has spent plenty of time in public life uh, preaching to the mob about what, what his views are on social issues and everything else. Well, now he's going to do that allegedly on top of a pile of money, $24 million, when we find Qantas is in a pretty difficult position. Uh, and as I outlined before, uh, there's allegations that they've actually booked people onto flights that never existed and were never going to take off. Uh, and I think that is a real challenge for Qantas. Their reputation is now severely damaged. Uh, and this government is tied up in it. Uh, we just want straight answers. That's what we're looking for, Sharon. Mm. Do you know that over the course of Alan Joyce's 15 years as a CEO of Qantas, he was paid $125 million? $125 million. Wow. It's, it's massive. All right, Daniel Molino, Keith Pitt, thank you both so much for joining me.